Hello and welcome back, you Unrealists. I'm Michael, the number one Unreal Engine nerd, and we will continue where we left off. So we will not go into the technicalities of AI yet. We first need an enemy model, because it's not very cool to look at a cube which moves around. We want to have a full-blown enemy, because we will need it later on. It should attack us and it do, does need to do a lot of different things. Okay, so first off, you need to download an asset pack again. So go into the video description. Yes, who the fuck actually reads uh, video descriptions? But because I tell you to, you will just go down, you will look at the download link and click on it. The file will be called Toot Assets 6 and when you have downloaded it, you need to unpack it at a free location or the location you want. And inside the Toot Asset 6 will be the Hollow Sentinel Float animation, the Hollow Sentinel Idle, the Hollow Sentinel Mesh, the Hollow Sentinel Normal and the Hollow Sentinel text Texture. Now, as you might have seen, because you are smart people, our enemy will be called Hollow Sentinel. So let's create a folder for our Hollow Sentinel. Get back to our project. Go then to our left panel and you will see an enemy folder here. If you don't have the enemy folder, please create it. You can create it by right clicking on the LDR content folder, click on new folder, and then call it enemies. When you are done creating the enemies folder, you right cl you click on the enemies folder, right click inside the enemies folder, and then select new folder. We will call it, yes, yes, hello sentinel, 100 points. And we will get inside the hollow sentinel. Okay. That sounds a little bit dirty, but we will do it, regardless. So when we are <laughs> inside the Hollow Sentinel, we will click on the import button and we will select the Hollow Sentinel mesh first. Just click it, click on open, and we will get our nice FBX import options. We have all these cute options here, but um, the most important should be checked, but just to double check, we will have the skeletal mesh checked, we will have the import mesh checked, we will have the pre preserve smoothing groups checked, we will, we will have the import meshes and bone hierarchy checked, we will have the normal import methods to import normals and tangents, and then create physics assets should also be checked, but what we want to have unchecked yeah, we will get a little bit aggressive here because we want to have control over every damn thing. We will just deselect import animations. And the rest can be left like it is. So we click on import. Now we get a bunch of errors, just ignore it because errors, yeah, it doesn't matter. As long as we are not experience er experiencing errors or hefty errors in our gameplay, pfft, it doesn't matter. So we just close it and ignore it. <laughs> and um, we have the Hollow Sentinel mesh here. We have the Hollow Sentinel physics asset, which we, we can do, uh, which we can use for ragdolling later on. Yeah, yeah. Hint, hint. Diablo. So we can actually throw people around and our basic skeleton asset. Okay, now we will import our animations. So right click again, whoops, not right click again. We will go to the import. Yeah, I'm a dummy. So we click on import and then we select the hollow sentinel idle animation and the hollow sentinel float animation. If you want to select multiple things in here, just click on one of them, 
then hold down control and left click on the next one. We will need the idle animation, the float animation, the normal TGA and the texture TGA. Then click on open and it will open our cute FBX import option again. We have our skeletal mesh, we have our import mesh, but we don't need this import mesh because we already have one. Yeah, so we deselect the import mesh option and under skeleton we will select our hollow sentinel mesh. Cool, the rest can be left as it is and then we will just click on import all. So it will be applied to every animation we actually selected. It will take a while and we are done with it. We save it and now we need multiple folders because this will get me messy pretty fast. We will right click again and we will select the new folder option. We will call it material. Tss, material. Tss. And we will select the hollow sentinel text and the hollow sentinel normal and move them into the materials. We will not copy it, we will move it. We right click again, we create a new folder and we call it anim... if I could spell again... animations... and we will select our hollow sentinel idle and our hollow sentinel float animation drag them into the animations and move them in here. So right now our animation assets and materials are out of the way and we still just have our, have our hollow sentinel mesh and our physics asset and our skeletal assets here. Yeah. Cool, that's step one. Let's continue. We need a blend space and no, don't confuse it with safe spaces, they're pretty dumb. Blend spaces. <clears throat> so we go into the animations folder, right click, select animation, and then we will select blend space 1D. Who wants the D? The hollow sentinel mesh skeleton. So we select the hollow mesh skeleton. Okay. Now, surprise, surprise, we will call it hollow sentinel underscore BS. Not for blend space, but for bullshit. No, it's the other way around. For blend space, not for bullshit. So, hollow sentinel underscore blend space is the thing we need to create. So, this is now our blend space, and we will double click on it. We will have our checkerboard enemy, looks pretty ugly, mm, we will change it, yeah. But let's focus on our name. You should recommend these options because I already explained it in the previous tutorials, but I will just make it as a reminder. We are all forgetful, so I will redo it. <coughs> redo it. Okay. <laughs> Now we have our name up here, which we just will call speed, because this is an input pin where we can put our speed into, which we will pass from our animation blueprint. We have our minimum access value and maximum access value. And the blend space, what the blend space basically does is it um, blends between one animation state to another. So from our idle animation, we can go to our float animation. And this is always based on a float variable, which is mostly the speed variable, or rather the speed of the pawn. We will um, select the maximum access value and put in 600. Right now, our default character blueprint speed is on 600. I don't know if we have our player, or, or rather our player character, which has the same 
speed. No, we have a max walk speed in our El Diablo car blueprint on 375. So we will say uh, we will use the same value. So we will put in into the maximum access value 375. So the next thing we need to do is we get our hollow sentinel idle. We will drag it in here, but we will put it at the start here, which you can see with this gray icon. We will not put it here, here, and certainly not here. We will put it at the start. The float animation, which is our move animation, will be put at the end here. And when we then go into this <coughs> window, hold down the shift button or the left shift button, and press our left mouse button, it will change animation states from our idle to our movement animation. However, as you might see, it's not very noticeable. So we will go into the float animation, just double click on the asset, and on the rate scale on the left panel here, we will put it to three or input three. <clears throat> we are done here and we can just close it. The next thing we will do is go into the animations again. Um, but I'm in the wrong animations folder. Uh, we will go into the Hollow Sentinel animations fo folder. So just go into the animations folder, right click and go on the animation and then select animation blueprint. In the animation blueprint, or rather this create animation blueprint window, we will select our hollow sentinel mesh and click OK. Now we will call it, yes, 100 points, hollow sentinel anim bp. Wonderful. So we will double click on our animation blueprint and we have a sad, sad man which can't run because we don't have any input here. So we will help him. Let's call him Frank. Frank is pretty alone and we need to help him. So we right click and type in state, oops, state, that's new state machine, this one here. We will select the node and we will rename it to motion. This state machine will control our, our animation behavior and this will then drive the end animation or the final animation pose. But just to set it up already now, we want to attack at a later point. So we will need to create a slot. Not a real slot, but a slot with O. So right click and type in slot and use the slot default slot. This will just be responsible for attacking, so we will use it later on. But right now you can input the motion the state machine to the default slot and this final animation pose with this one here. When we compile and save, it complains, it says entry node motion is not connected to state. And there was no entry state connection in motion. It's bickering around because we didn't put in it anything in here. So we will fix it. Double click on the motion. And this is the thing it's complaining about. It has nothing to transition to. So we will go to the right panel on the asset browser and drag in our hollow sentinel blue blend space, <laughs> blend space. <laughs> now we will connect the entry to the hollow sentinel blend space, double click on it and surprise, surprise the next problem. We have no speed variable, but we need a speed variable or it will not run. This thing will not float. So we will just drag out from the speed variable select promoter variable and we will call it 
Yes. Speed. No LSD or anything like that. Just normal, plain, old-fashioned speed. Okay. Um, we will now go to the event graph up here. And we will have our event blueprint of the animation. And we will have our try get pawn owner. Now, first off, we need to pass on any velocity of the pawn. So we will drag out from the return value of the try get pawn owner and type in velocity. This gets our current velocity of our pawn. Then we drag out from the return value vector and search for a length and select length because our speed variable is a float and only it can only hold one value, we need the vector length to actually have the speed extracted out of a vector. The next thing we need to do is we need to tell the animation blueprint just to update if an asset or rather an, uh, a blueprint is still active. But if it is destroyed, we don't need to update it. So in order to check it, we drag out from the return value of the get pawn owner and type in is valid. We will take the option with the question mark, connect it with event blueprint update animation, and then we will drag out our speed variable by just dragging it out into the event graph, select set, connect it with is valid. And then connect, connecting the return value of the vector length to the speed. The magic is done. So congratulations. One part is already done. The next thing is we need to close this animation blueprint. Go back to our hollow sentinel. Go to our materials and double click on it. And we need to create our material. So just right click on our hollow sentinel texture. Select create material and then call it Hello Sentinel underscore material. Just open it up, then minimize it and then drag in the Hollow Sentinel normal. We want to have a bump map or else the enemy will, play, will look pretty bland. Just connect it to the normal input, the normal map, and we will not use parallax mapping or anything like that because it's an enemy. We don't. We want to focus on AI stuff, so it's not that important how it looks right now. We will just click save, <clears throat> and then we wait a little bit. If you have a slower computer, you can actually grab a coffee or a warm cacao. So, yeah. Okay. I will close the material editor. We have our material right now here. We go back to our Hollow Sentinel folder. Double click on our Hollow Sentinel mesh. And under our materials up here on the top panel, the top left panel, we will select our newly created Hollow Sentinel mat and hollow sentinel material. Just save it and close it. The thing is right now it will it compile the shaders. It will take a little bit of time, but it will not detract us from doing other stuff in the meantime. So we are still in the hollow sentinel folder. We will right click in here and select blueprint class. Because we want to use a character blueprint, we will use the character blueprint. Now we will call it, yes, hollow sentinel underscore bp. Just open it up and then we have our viewport, construction and event graph. Select the mesh or the mesh section here, go on the right on the skeleton mesh and select our hollow sentinel. Just turn it 90 degrees to the right. 
so we actually face forward and this blue little arrow here will tell you where forward is. Now we need to scale it up so it encompasses or rather is in the same size with the capsule. So like this. Compile it and save it. Now go to the mesh again. Then go to the right panel on the, on the animation, on the animation class. Click on it and select Hollow Sentinel Animation Blueprint. And you see here, you did magic. Good job, guys and girls. So, what is the next thing? We need to do one last thing here. And that's the character movement, because we will click on it. Because we will, uh, we selected um, a walking speed of 375 um, on the character blueprint or on the player character blueprint, we will do the same with this here. We can make it faster or slower, but we will just make it um, predictable. So it's easier to follow. <clears throat> So we will go to max walk speed on the character movement and we will uh, change the max walk speed to 375. Now we will close it. <clears throat> we will test if this actually works here, if they are floating. And yes, they do. And here's one little thing. <clears throat> They are weirdly twitching and it's it looks like it's a glitch, but it is meant to be so. It was animated this way. I animated this this way because yeah, it made a creepy feel and it's kind of a weird thing to do. <clears throat> yeah, so it works as far as I can tell. And in the next part, we will go in depth with basic AI interactions Okay, that was it for this part. Um, in the next part, we will go much more in depth with AI. We will get really technical about it. And I will show you the most easy interaction with, um, with AIs. And I will, see, I will tell you the disadvantages and the advantages of certain AI behaviors and AI setups. And I will um, go into, into detail by things or with things um, where new buys mostly have problems with, like having huge lag spikes and AI problems and too many AI calls and so on. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you enjoy the series. I'm actually enjoying it a lot to do tutorials again. I'm. <laughs> It's always uh, I kind I kind of missed make, making tutorials, <laughs> but well, if you are busy, then you're busy, now. Yeah. Okay. I wish you a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, whatever you want, um, and I hope I hopefully see you next time. So goodbye. <laughs>